Okay, welcome back to this tutorial here and this session. But before we I just continue for, I should say, visualizations of the uncertainty which is inherent, I should say, for this Bayesian and probabilistic, probabilistic model that we had today with the stand. I noticed that on the previous tutorial, I just mistakenly, I had, I should say, uh, CF, row, CF uh, row of 2 and I had 1 there. And that was the reason, it, it was like that, and that was the reason the thing which I was trying to, I should say, plot, it was not working. And essentially, it had been to the other way. I had to say, okay, in one plane, I just want to have two plots, which I just made a mistake. And if I do that, you see that I can just have the plot. Then I just go the AB line for the other one, which is going to be, this one is the non-Bayesian model. Then I have another plot. Then I had, I should say, the fit which is going to be the blue for the Bayesian one, which is the stand one, which we plotted. And you see that how these things look. Somehow seems very similar, but the thing that we are just going to do is going to be plotting and visualizing the uncertainty inherent with this model, but also the other differences that we can expect from the Bayesian is going to be the interpretation of, I should say, of the credible intervals that you have, which is not going to be, I should say, um, the, uh, the, this is out of the scope of these tutorials, and you can check the other videos which I have prepared and I extensively talked about, I should say, the significance of the credible intervals and the difference that the credible interval has in terms of its interpretation with the non-Bayesian framework. And that's, that's going to be a different story. Now, in order to visualize The uncertainty, we are going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come here and say that, okay, I noticed that for the plot, what did I say? I said that I'm just going to plot X and Y. X represented the weight and Y for me represented the height. And you can check that also here. We have created these values, these numerical values here. X represented the weight in pounds and y represented the heights in inches okay i'm just going to plot that once more and i'm just going to also uh plot that the same thing which we had i said that the a b line i said that the a b line which is going to be i should say the posterior i should say for the alpha However, I had the mean of it because we know that we have to just have the mean as an inference and also we had the mean of the posterior for the beta and we had this one, that's how we just plotted that and that's the thing which we remember from the previous tutorials. Now, if I just want to create the uncertainty, it's going to be very easy. Huh? I'm just going to do that right now. We say that we are just going to plot every, I should say, estimates which we had for A and B. Okay. Then I had, I should say, around 1,000 iterations. If you remember from the stand function, from 1,000 iterations, we had 500 was taken as a warm-up. Then if we exclude that, we have essentially almost 500 iterations when you assume that, that it's going to have, that the model has converged. Then I say that for i in one let's say two let's say imagine that it's going to be for example the 500 which is going to be the one which we had we are just going to have the a b i should say the a b line the mean is a function itself we cannot just put i should say index it the posterior essentially it's i should say a, 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 um, an object which we created as an inf i should say from the posterior density but the only thing which we can index is going to be the alpha which we had there the same thing for the mean and the posterior here, and the same thing I can index the thing which I have as the beta. However, you know that for the uh, four functions, you have essentially this one, these notation curly brackets, and also I'm just going to come here and check the color, I should say, for the gray. And LTY, I'm just going to go ahead with the just put that as one okay let's go ahead i'm just going to go ahead and execute the line and let's see what do i get at the end
And now there we are. You see that the plot is created. And we have this one here. And also, if we just want to see the other one, which is going to be the main one which we had in the plots, if I can zoom this, you see that the Give me a second. This one uh, does. Let's plot it with a bigger, I should say, with a bigger format. Let's erase all the plots which we had. It's going to be way better. And now let's go ahead to just do this one. I'm just going to go with the plot. This is the plots of, I should say, we can just go ahead and put the main as a name. I'm just going to call that, let's say, the American. woman height and weight and also the other thing we can just go ahead define the x lab the x lab is going to represent as you know it's going to represent the weight and also you know that the y lab is going to represent the heights okay and now i'm just going to execute this you see that the plot is created right now there and the way which we see that, essentially it shows that the height is going to be the y-axis and the x-axis represents the weight of the American woman that we, taught, we, we studied about that. Now, it is going to be the plot that we had. And now I'm just going to go ahead to just fit the line, I should say, of all the inferences that we had. You see that all these, I should say, Seems that I have some problem with the system. This one, it doesn't zoom, I should say, the plot. But if I can try to maximize the plot which I have right now, as we can see, you see that the plot which we have, essentially for all the American women that we have, for 15 ones, if you imagine that we are just drawing 500 times from the posterior density of the parameters alpha, beta, and the sigma which we had in our model, then for each draws which you have for the values of the alpha and beta and the sigma, you make the inference, I should say, of your uh, the feet, which we had in our model. For each line, you draw each line. When you have 500 lines, which is going to be the feet of these 15 American women's height and weights, you see that they become that thick. In terms of, I should say, the color is going to be the gray. Then it means that any that that you can think of that you are in the area which is shown by the color as the gray it shows that you are in the region that it could have been the one of the fits and one of the models in the uh, probabilistic model that you had from the bayesian of the american woman's i should say height and weight and that's what we have done in this stand and now if you just want to see that, for example, in terms of if you take the mean of it, the mean of all of your, I should say, the estimates which you have had, that's why you see that it's going to be the mean. That's why I just put it the mean. And if you just put all the mean of all the inferences that you have had for, I should say, for the alpha, for the beta, and for the sigma, you get, I should say, this blue line. And if you remember the mean that we had for our inference, if we just want to talk about that, you remember that you had the model A. If we just go ahead and execute that line, we see that the mean for all the inferences that we have had, the mean for the alpha is going to be 25.78. And if you remember from the whiteboard, the alpha represented the intercepts and the beta represents the slope. Then also the sigma represents, I should say, the I should say, uh, the one uh, the, for the standard deviation. But with the, I should say, with the alpha, with the slope of 0 0.29, and the intercepts of 25.78, you can draw, I should say, the blue line, which I have shown that in here. But the other regions, which is in gray line, it means that any other lines, it could have been one of the fits in our model, if it's still in that line then it's it's that's how we just interpret that i should say that gray area in the model that we just created in the bayesian statistics using the stand probabilistic language there okay 
And that, I should say, that was an interesting, I should say, way to plot and show, I should say, the uncertainty and the fact that we show that we are not certain that it's going to be the best fit of a model. Any lines in that gray area can be a best fit of our model then. And that's why we see that we have some uncertainty. We are not certain. We do not know if the blue line is going to be the right and the best one then. Because the blue line is the mean one. It could have been any other line. And that's why we talk about the uncertainty and that's how we just visualize it. Okay. I should say I had so much I should say fun. Talk about I should say how to visualize the uncertainty. And I hope you enjoyed I should say learning about how to plot the uncertainty of the Bayesian fit which you have, especially with this stand. In the next tutorials, we are just going to change the gears. We are just going to move on to just talk about how we can just have some probabilistic models. When we just fit the model, how we can just use the fit and the model that we created in order to predict the behavior of some observations which we have not observed them yet. And that's what we call them the predictive model. Okay. As I have always said, I cannot just wait to see you on the next tutorial when we talk about the predictive models. Then, see you next time.